Right, thank you very much for that, uh, for that Tom. Um, just um, by way of preparation, I know that I'm, I'm speaking in a, in a session labeled um, auto-tagging, and I'm not going to talk about all the auto-tagging. And um, by way of signposting, this, um, the title of this talk, Should We Consign All Taxonomies to the Dustbin? I'm not even going to tell you whether we should or we shouldn't. Um, what I'm hoping is that um, in the brief time um, that I have available, that I can um, show you a couple of case studies um, that enable you to make your own mind up about, um, about uh, when taxonomies may or may not be, um, be appropriate. Um, one of the themes of this conference, I think, has been, um, has been about looking at uh, various ways of, um, of achieving text analytics, and, uh, and I hope that to make a contribution um, that's not too provocative um, in, uh, in terms of um, providing um, uh, one solution or uh, solutions that um, I think might be of, might be of interest. So, I'm, uh, as Tom says, I work with a company called Ansilo. They're based in Denmark, although I'm in the, um, in the UK. Um, um, uh, we solve business problems with AI. So, um, one, pro one uh, thing we emphasize is that um, it's solutions to problems rather than, uh, rather than an emphasis on the particular technology we're using, although I'm going to show you something about how that, how that technology works. So, I'll uh, tell you a little bit about the background of how, what Ansilo does. Um, and I have a couple of case studies. One is about um, academic publishing, which I'm sure you'll all be familiar with, and then another one on the um, uh, United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, which is uh, just a sort of a nice thing that uh, is very easy to grasp, and uh, finish with a few recommendations. And as I say, I hope those recommendations will give you, by implication, an answer to the, uh, the question on the first, first screen. So really briefly, um, some of this will be, you'll recognize um, some of the, 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 the tools employed here from um, some earlier presentations. This is an academic abstract. Uh, it's about, um, um, it's about uh, water and, um, uh, and serum. And um, what um, traditional approaches would do is um, extract, um, they look for um, entity recognition, things that uh, terms like sodium, serum, water. Um, what, uh, what Ansilo does is, um, in contrast, it's um, rather than looking, uh, rather than starting with the entities, it starts with um, with concepts. Uh, those are the terms shown in um, shown in, in yellow in that uh, on that on that screen, and um, those concepts are identified um, using uh, statistical tools, um, and uh, they're done by looking at this text in um, uh, with reference to a corpus. The corpus is um, um, many hundreds of thousands of, uh, of documents. In fact, um, uh, what I'll be using for pretty much all this presentation is 1.7 million, uh, the articles, uh, the full text articles available in PubMed Central. So it's a medical corpus. And don't be surprised if a lot of the, article, a lot of the, uh, the screens you see relate to medical topics. Um, uh, so compared with, um, with uh, that corpus, these are phrases which are um, characteristic indicative of some way about the meaning of, the, of that text. And you'll see that one of the things that uh, Ansilo specializes in is not unigrams, but um, multigrams. It sort of pick, typically pick, picks up um, uh, phrases rather than individual, individual words. So it's things like serum, sample, indirect potentiometry, that kind of thing. <clears throat> so uh, just to hammer the point home, it's unsupervised. Um, uh, I have nothing up my sleeve. There was no taxonomy used to build those concepts. Um, it doesn't have a training set. Um, it just takes a corpus and it uh, identifies concepts based on that corpus. Uh, and there's no taxonomy. So, um, so uh, that's the fundamental um, part of, uh, of all the solutions I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to show you. So enough of the sort of the principles of how it works. Let's move on to, um, well, let's just show you the sort of, um, if you really want to see the concepts, and I don't recommend it. I've shown them quite small on here. Um, there are something like um, uh, 100 or 150 concepts for any academic article. Um, and I'll read a few of those out. Coronary artery disease, um, uh, aspirin resistance, pa resistant patient, um, uh, this, this kind of thing. These are phrases. These are not standard um, uh, taxonomic terms, but they are characteristic of the document, like a kind of fingerprint. And uh, the bar chart indicates a um, uh, relative, um, relative um, important score of those terms, um, uh, of those uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the document. 
So let's move on to, um, to academic publishing. The challenge with academic publishing um, uh, is that, uh, uh, is that the, the sheer number of, um, uh, number of articles, well, just to finish off the, uh, the I mentioned sort of the number, the number of uh, concepts we're extracting, sorry, on this, uh, this one. Um, we're extracting more concepts than, um, than you get in a, in a standard taxonomy. In other words, the, um, what, uh, what Ansalo is doing is, uh, is, is extremely granular. Um, it's finding uh, terms which are far more, um, far more precise than, uh, than even in something like MeSH, which is the, the most widely used classification system for medical content. Handwriting recognition, uh, I trust you're all familiar with. Um, it's a, a technology which has been adopted and which is in widespread use. I put this, um, this screen up uh, from, uh, for, from, from yesterday's presentations because um, um, I wanted to, um, to, uh, to, to, to confirm with all of you that um, uh, uh, this is a known technology. We're all familiar with filling in those numbers. I always um, write the numbers as badly as I can and I'm amazed that the machine manages to identify what it is that I've, uh, that I've keyed. Um, uh, the way this works, as I'm sure you know, is you simply provide thousands of examples of, um, uh, of how to key the number, the, the how to write the number zero, the number one, number two, and so on. If you throw enough examples at the system, then the system eventually uh, manages to understand um, what a four is and what a five is and what a six is. This is a known technology. Um, uh, uh, by known, it means that it's, a, it's widely adopted. Um, it works faster than humans can, and it's more reliable than humans are. So, um, so um, before we, when we move on to text, I think it's worth bearing in mind, we already have examples where we're familiar with, it's if, if it's, it, compared with self-driving cars, as if um, we've had self-driving cars for sort of many years uh, using this kind, of, um, this kind of technology. So academic publishing. So the challenge in academic publishing is simply the scale involved. There's something like 3,000 uh, scientific articles published every single day. Um, if you're a scientist, um, there's no way, as a human, you can keep up with the sheer proliferation of, um, of, of articles being, um, uh, that are coming out in, uh, in, your, in your subject area. Something like 50 million, the figures are uh, uh, difficult to, 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 to know precisely, but more than 50 million scholarly scientific articles have been, uh, have been published in, uh, in totality. In other words, it's a beyond human scale. It's something where you need some kind of machine-based tool to, um, to, uh, to, to, uh, to, to make any, any sense of it. So um, uh, let's just take one small example of, um, of uh, one of the tasks that, uh, that has to be done when a, when a scholarly article is published. You're familiar with this concept, peer review, where you need to find somebody who can review the article you've just written. Um, how that's done uh, traditionally is, uh, this is where a taxonomy comes, up, uh, comes into play, an article will be submitted to a publisher. Um, that article will then be tagged either by the author or by the publisher or by some outsource company. Um, uh, the tag would be against uh, some, sort of, um, uh, some sort of corporate or subject uh, taxonomy. Mesh is an example or it could be an in-house one. Then you'd, um, uh, then you'd have a set of reviewers, and if you have a lot of reviewers, which you must have if you're publishing a large number of articles, um, those reviewers then also need to be categorized. Um, and then it's simply a question of matching the articles and, uh, and the reviewers. But you notice we've gone through a four-stage process to, um, to, get to, uh, to get to the solution we, um, we want to find. Uh, there are easy ways of, 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 of doing it. So let's show you how that, um, how that works. Um, uh, we want to link, um, uh, if we're having related content, we want to link articles to articles. And we do that through currently a taxonomy. Uh, or we link articles to person, that is uh, an article to a reviewer, and um, you can create a profile for individuals based on what they've written. Um, or you can link an article to a journal because uh, you want to find out which is the most appropriate journal to publish your article in, and you, need, you create a profile for that journal. In each case, it's like a two-stage process to, uh, to get to, to, to reach your, your goal. What we can do with um, that concept extraction is uh, eliminate the bit in the middle by moving uh, directly from article to article by finding related content, directly from article to person by creating a profile for the, for the person based on the concepts of the articles they've authored, and directly from article to journal. And um, uh, what I'll do at this point is show you, attempt to show you, um, how that actually looks like. <coughs> this is... Um, uh, this is all of uh, 10 days old. We, we launched this at um, the Frankfurt Book Fair. And um, 
This is a, a real-time uh, manuscript evaluator. So um, uh, I'm just going to show you one function from this um, from from this uh, this 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 this, uh, this screen. Um, what um, what this does is it uh, it enables you to key in or to to, to paste in the text of, of an article. Um, let's take um, uh, this one here. Um, uh, just to speed things up, I've, uh, I've already sort of um, copied and um, uh, pasted it. I put it into this box, and um, when I click on Evaluate, it will um, uh, live, uh, hopefully, it will... Um, um, right. <laughs> um, right. Yeah, yeah. Let's, uh, let's, let's uh, just, 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 just bear with me. This, is, this guarantees that... Um, that um, uh, it's not something I prepared earlier. Uh, right. So what it's doing is it's checking that article against the 1.7 million full text documents in PubMed Central. And, um, and it comes up on the left-hand side with a whole slew of, um, of the kind of things that, um, uh, that uh, you as a, as a publishing a publisher need to check against that, uh, that document. Um, I copied and pasted um, uh, HTML, but it could have been PDF. And what it does is it extracts various things. It'll start off by finding the title and the... Um, and the um, so there's the title, and uh, there are the authors. Um, a lot of authors on this one. And then there's something called technical compliance where it's sort of looking for things like, is there an abstract? Is there... Uh, uh, these, are, these, are, these are not much machine learning uh, uh, tools. But um, as we scroll down, um, uh, here we've extracted the concepts. Those are the, what's some, uh, those are the sort of the, the, the things I showed you earlier, and in this case, it's, uh, it's showing which is um, uh, which terms are in common use, which terms are um, uh, could be be, be deprecated, um, uh, and then further down, uh, we found some key statements uh, which are sort of significant uh, assertions in the article um, um, relating to the to the to the content. But the bit I'm going to show you is um, the. Uh, uh, the one simple simple area right down here is trending concepts. Um, uh, uh, so here is journal finder, and here is uh, your reviewer finder. So all we've done is um, uh, we found um, uh, individual reviewers who, uh, who've authored a paper on PubMed Central, and we can vary the period in the last 12 months, who don't have a conflict of interest, which means they're not based in the same institution where you are, um, who've authored a paper with those matching concepts. So. Um, what, in other words, this system has done is, is uh, it's gone from uh, problem to solution without the taxonomy in the middle. Um, and uh, you, the, 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 the human element is that um, uh, we haven't made any decisions. We haven't uh, placed the paper with this person. You, the editor, can then sort of decide um, uh, who, who the most appropriate person is. There might be good reasons why you don't want to approach this person. You might have sent them some, a review last week or something like that. Um, and similarly, um, we're using... Uh, we're, we're Checking against the, uh, the 17,000 journals on uh, PubMed Central, um, if you're familiar with academic publishing, it might not be surprising that PLOS One comes up because it's like a super journal that can cover many, many different topics. Uh, but um, immediately below it, we've got uh, immunology journals and, um, and um, uh, related uh, content. And there's a percentage match um, which shows the, um, the, the, overlapping, um, the overlapping concepts. So... Um, that's uh, there, there's an example of how the um, uh, and it worked as well. That's good. <laughs> um, an example of um, of, uh, of, of, of of solving problems and uh, going uh, without without using a, without using a, a, a taxonomy. Um, to confirm why this is necessary, um, uh, astonishingly, at a presentation by Wiley uh, last year, uh, they stated that 26% of uh, U.S. academics that were contacted for peer review declined. Uh, not because they were busy, not because they were on holiday, but because the paper was outside their subject area. It's quite incredible, sort of, um, uh, when you talk about the volume of um, uh, the number of scientific articles, um, uh, the, 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 the life is too short for this kind of um, uh, um, waste of time in, the sort of, um, in, in, in essential processes. And, of course, these time delays make it slower for, um, for, for articles to get published, which is the, which is the dream of every, um, every reviewer. Um, so uh, just to sort of, um, uh, uh, there's with a taxonomy, and uh, this, is a, this is just to show you how the, how the peer reviewer works. So let's move on to um, uh, uh, my other case study, which is um, uh, very nice and um, uh, very nice and colourful. It's the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Are you familiar with these? Uh, they, were, they were launched about 2015, three years ago. The United Nations 
produced a, um, a, a statement of um, 17 goals for the planet. These are they. Um, uh, and these are wonderful, uh, these are, uh, uh, wonderful goals that are, I think we can all subscribe to um, until, as good taxonomists, we look at these, uh, these terms in detail and uh, throw up our hands in horror. Um, as in uh, quite how you, um, how you define some of these things. Um, number 14, life below water. Um, it's not a very standard taxonomic term. Um, there's uh, um, zero hunger. It's a bit more easy to, to, um, to convert. So um, uh, OECD, uh, Organization for Economic Co uh, Cooperation and Development, um, uh, approached us to, um, to, to tag their content to these 17 uh, sustainable development goals. Now, in this case, the solution was, um, uh, did involve using a training set because um, um, these terms by themselves were not, um, uh, were not sufficient. So, um, so we used some, uh, some United Nations content, that, um, uh, that, um, uh, some full text, which expressed what those, uh, those, uh, these, uh, these concepts are all, all about. Using those gold documents, we then, uh, uh, we then used a system called uh, Classify, which is here. And, um, and I'll just show you uh, how this works. That, um, essentially, this, um, this takes... Uh, setting takes concepts. Um, I'm just showing you a couple of concepts here. Here I'm looking for aspirin and heart attack. I can uh, add concepts uh, like this, um, and uh, these are the concepts in the corpus. Um, I simply select the relevant concepts. I'm not doing it in a meaningful way, but um, uh, select the ones that I think are relevant. And um, uh, using those concepts, the system then finds a set of a set of documents. I won't go through this in detail. Um, and, uh, and what you see on here is a histogram whereby the system has found um, uh, articles that it thinks are relevant on the right-hand side, articles it thinks are irrelevant on the left-hand side, and the ones in the middle leaves you to, uh, to then evaluate them. What's interesting, the reason I'm showing you this is because there's a human element here in that you can move these sliders around. You can adjust how much the human then evaluates. So what we're showing here is uh, automatic concept extraction with a human layer of um, uh, configurability on top of it. And um, uh, you use an iterative method, you put in some goal documents, you play around with the concepts, you, you, uh, you remove the concepts that are not relevant, you include the concepts that are relevant, you see if you like the results when you're happy, you move the sliders over to the left and you automate the process. If you're unhappy, you move the slider to the right and you're, and you're reviewing more, um, uh, you're reviewing the sort of the, 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 what the machine has found is, is relevant. The moral here is that um, we are creating a, um, a system which is um, using automatic tools, provides a level of human configuration, and still doesn't use any taxonomy. So, how are we doing for time? Um, ten, minutes. ten minutes, very good. So, um, uh, just to summarize then what, the, um, uh, what, uh, what, the, what this talk has been all about, um, um, we're looking to solve business problems using AI tools. I would always recommend, uh, and this is another theme that came up from yesterday, we start with a business use case, start with, um, uh, uh, with the goal of what you're trying to do rather than focusing on the, sort of, um, uh, the particular technology you're using to, um, to fix it. But having decided the, the use case, then choose the best tool for the job. Um, understand, and this is a role for I think everyone in this room, it's not the role of the technologists who build this stuff, it's the role of you guys to decide what, um, uh, what's the most appropriate technology, what the machine can do well, what the humans can do well, and then identify a solution which combines the human and machine tools uh, in an effective way. And I think it's always good to have some sort of human, um, you notice that uh, we're using an entirely automated process, but then adding a human layer for individual solutions, which enables, the, which um, uh, which makes the humans comfortable. They can play a part and they can be involved in the in the in the in the process. And finally, equally importantly, advise on how to use and evaluate. Um, uh, the the standard evaluation measures for this kind of thing uh, may not be what you're familiar with, as in uh, using sort of a um, uh, um, uh, checking against a human human score. That's a subject for a, another talk. What I hope I've shown is um, I've just listed a couple of statements from, uh, from, the, uh, from, from yesterday. The primary role of text analytics is auto-classification. Well, um, uh, I don't think we did a lot of classification in the, those examples, certainly not on the peer review and the journal finder. And, um, and uh, AI is less accurate than rule-based text analytics. Uh, it's obviously for you to decide, but I think that's not necessarily, necessarily the case. This is my provocative bit. And... Um, <laughs> 
and I'll, I'll finish with a, with a quote from the, um, the STM Association, which is the leading trade association for scientific technical publishers, um, which I think states uh, what I've been saying in, uh, in a very concise way. There are cases where the use of a taxonomy or ontology is still appropriate. But this should no longer be the assumed starting point. In other words, my recommendation is um, you're the people to, to, to identify what the starting point should be. And I think that's where the exciting challenge in this area is. The sort of there are, there are more than, there, there's more than one way to skin a cat, and um, and uh, and uh, it's for you to sort of decide which is the um, which is the best way to, um, to to solve it. Thank you. Okay. Any questions? Um, it, well, well it's a, it's a, it, it, it worked well with the medical corpus behind it. The, uh, it, it works well. It, 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 it works well in other domains too. Um, it just needs a big enough corpus. Um, but um, the reason why, and you'll see so many, uh, you typically see the same kind of subject examples in present in conferences like this, is because medical publishing and the pharma and so on is where a focus of <laughs> all the sort of uh, research is. So um, it doesn't. It's not that it works better in that area. It's just that more people have um, uh, put more kind of uh, um, resources into developing that sort of uh, subject so far. Um, I'm, uh, uh, I don't think there's any reason why it, it can't work just as well for history or philosophy or sort of um, the humanities. Um, it's just that the, uh, those publishers tend to sort of um, tend to follow rather than lead. Uh, the company we simply put in a sort of um, uh, that's that's not the machine learning that's simply sort of um, uh, picking up the um, the uh, the institution of the author uh, and, uh, and again that uh, that requires that we've uh, we've captured that and then uh, matching and then uh, having the institution of the author in a list uh, so that's just a sort of like a like a lookup table so it's um, um, it's the, 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 the reason I mention it is because um, um, if you're delivering a solution, um, one of the things about machine learning companies, they tend to, uh, to, then to look very proudly on the little bit that, uh, that which is machine learning and forget the sort of the fact that um, it doesn't deliver an entire solution. Um, if you're going to do this in anger, you need to make sure you don't choose a peer reviewer who's based sort of just uh, two doors away from you. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, versus yeah. I uh, skated over <laughs> the, uh, the, the the description of what Ansala's done was uh, pretty rapid. There is a there is a layer. There's a, an, a, a above the machine learning layer. There's a sort of um, there's an NLP layer where we're looking at um, some syntactic variations of things like um, you know brain disease, disease of the brain. Um, but there's also some pulling together, some harm normalization of the uh, of the concepts based on uh, similar kind of situations. So things like cardiac arrest and um, uh, myocardial infarction um, appear in similar places and similar uh, contexts. And so they, they, they're, they're never complete synonyms, but they're sort of approximate and they're sort of, um, they're pulled together. Well, it is largely, yeah, it is largely noun phrase ex extraction because the, um, the verbs are sort of um, uh, expressing the relationship between those. Um, and um, in a later, of course, what, what uh, Ansala is doing, as, as everyone is doing, is looking to find the relationships between those, uh, those noun phrases. But you're right, they're essentially noun and uh, adjectival phrases, sort of. Um, uh, 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 the, 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 so it's, uh, it's, it's similar, but it's just sort of um, wrapping it into a, um, um, putting more things around it um, so that it's moving it towards sort of um, delivering a solution rather than just sort of saying, look at this. When Ansalo started, um, we used to show the concepts to all the publishers, and we expected the publishers to fall over and sort of say, wow, that's amazing. And it, it was only amazing to the people who'd done it. <laughs> it, uh, it didn't deliver any solutions. Anything else? Any questions? Yes. There's, 
there's inevitably there's sort of um, uh, any process of this kind is going to generate some uh, some some noise. So so partly it's done through um, through um, uh, three answers to that. One is um, this has been touched on before. Um, you might have noticed that um, uh, the system pulls out things like journal titles, which are not relevant to the. Uh, they're not a, they're not a concept. It's it, it, it's in the doc, in the text we sent, but it's not uh, not relevant. So there's some parts of the the, uh, the, 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 the 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 text we still have to sort of um, if you like um, uh, not index. Um, Secondly, um, there is a level of, um, of sort of functional words. Um, um, in the medical context, for example, uh, the word um, uh, vaccine is uh, almost never, um, it relates to sort of a process, but it's not necessarily something you necessarily want to search on. So, so there are the things that are sort of the, the, that we, 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 uh, we, we, um, we deprioritize. Um, but there will always be some, some, uh, some, element, of, some element of noise. Um, you remember, we're looking at the, again, that's something I didn't mention, the, the um, uh, we look at the, 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 the concepts are used as collections, as clusters, and so even if one or two of those are, um, uh, are not, so, uh, not so, 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 so relevant, overall the, uh, the relevance is, um, uh, is, still, is still correct. The, uh, this corpus was selected because it was all open access and so it was available. Um, the, um, the, the, the choice of a corpus is a good, uh, good question. It's very much dependent on, the, um, um, on uh, what, um, what we can get access to. So we, could, we, uh, we work with walled gardens for, so publishers access, index their own content. Um, but in, uh, in areas like sort of, um, uh, uh, it, it depends, depends on, the, on the domain. And for patents, for example, there are public collections of, um, of, uh, of patents. But it's, uh, you're absolutely correct. You need to find um, um, the largest possible um, uh, domain. Um, and, uh, and there needs to be a reasonable amount of um, uh, some, some sort of structure in it for, 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 this, for this technology to work well. Yeah, around a hundred thousand words, about a hundred thousand documents, or a million words. That kind of is the sort of minimum in one domain for this sort of um, technology. It's, it's quite a lot. So it, it lends itself to the science publishing again. It's sort of um, uh, it's got much, much more than that. We've ended all of Spring and Nature comes to about fifteen million documents, and uh, and uh, this works really well. <laughs>